What is up you guys, Sage here, and today you'll see the tears of an African young man crying over his history, heritage, culture, the mental slavery that has ensued as a result of this loss of context and potential solutions going forward. Hope you enjoy. Hello. What is up you guys, Sage here. Um, yeah, to, today is a, it's a bit of a... I'm, I'm sure it's not going to be too long. Um... If it is, then you'll you'll understand why in a few. When when I say I was in in actual tears as this dawned on me yesterday, that's literally what I mean. Um, I was in the kitchen, doing my thing, doing the dishes, um, having a conversation with a friend, and as it hit me like a ton of bricks, man. Took the took, took the old glasses off. And that one, I'm not saying I was crying, right? Because I know, I know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know nothing. But there was that one manly, you know, tear going down the cheek as I, I realized the true gravity of how dire the situation is of my people and how deeply the, the pain actually goes. And I wrote... I'm in pain for my history and heritage because they are the roots. They connect us as Africans to who we were and to the truth. Truth about the meaning behind cultural practices. At the times that they were being done, they weren't done just as culture, but as a practice with a purpose. Purpose, truth. And so we've lost the purpose we've lost the truth when you lose this history and this this deeper understanding of now the practices are are practiced they 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 they're done but they're not done in the same context that they were being done back then because we don't have the context and uh this this came from something that i was listening to and they spoke of that we had historical writings as Tosa people, Zulu, Tswana, you name it. And these were, were stripped, taken away. And with that, not only are, are we given the Bible thereafter, but we're also stripped of the meaning behind the practice even though as as a people we still practice certain things we still do certain things and they are culture uh isintu but isintu by definition zindo is in zongabantu tingumtu mna jema ningumtu nje sisindu is in senzayo do you do you do you understand what i'm trying to say as in the the practices were done and because they were done, they became culture. They, there's, there's not a, a culture that existed for, for the purpose of being a culture. Do you understand? Well, what, what I'm trying to get to here is perhaps there, there are, are substitutes. Perhaps there are certain things we can do now, certain ways of giving back, certain ways to, to behave that would be more modern and logical and make sense. Because what they were doing that made sense then depending on what they have. Um, if we, let's touch on Lobola for two, three seconds. Depending on what your family were, were had in abundance, you would give of that. You would not take from lack. So if your family doesn't have uh, cattle and you guys are herders and you guys um, have whatever cabbage you have this many heads of cabbage and then that's what you trade in then you would give that and they would also give to you in what they had because this is more about a unification more so than i'm going to give to you because i i'm deep because the because this is is the trade that we're making it, it it went two ways it's a unification of the two bloodlines digress okay so okay it actually ties into the whole thing so you see now we we do practice something of the the laptops over there i'm gonna to have to refresh it because my my notes are on 
so anytime you see me stand up, I'm just refreshing the laptop or I'm, I'm keeping it awake. So you see now that we still practice Ilobor, but it's become something else over time. And I would argue, or some may argue as well, it has eroded in what it was. It's not what it was. And it doesn't make sense anymore. And the reason why it doesn't make sense is because we lack the context with which certain practices were done. So that's, that, that's just one example of some of the things we may have lost with the, the, the disconnection to those stories and to that context. Is that now we, we practice for the sake of practicing with no true understanding of the meaning behind these things and why they were done this certain way. And perhaps you living in your, in your whatever the situation is, times have changed, you, you're, you're now living in Cape Town, um, you're living in a flat, you have this and that. Is it still practical? Does it still make sense that in order to do a certain thing, you must slaughter this over here and this person must be present, that person must be present, you must do this and that? Or would it, would it have evolved over time and, be, and became something different? We don't know the answer to that. I'm not saying that that's what should have happened. I'm not saying we must stop these things. I love and appreciate my culture. However, I'm saying the context is very, very important. And that's something that's lost forever now. As an example. Forgive me if, if, my, 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 if my passion starts talking ahead of me. But please understand that I, I, am, I do actually feel this deeply. And these are not just things I'm saying. Purpose, truth was lost. With context, you lose the purpose of why something's done and you lose the truth. The question that comes to me and that comes to my heart as the pain bubbles to the surface, as there are tears in my eyes over the stealing of my history, understanding reasons behind my own culture, gone. That question is, And even if so, benzile, gone again. So this, this is an extension of, of the previous thing I said, which is as, as this history is gone, while I was writing that down, word Guido that was um, going through my head, which is which is the words that, that uh, Jesus said on the cross as he was being crucified. As Jesus was being crucified, he says, forgive them, Lord. They know not what they do. This is what they've done. Benzi, the Kornake, they've done it and the damage is done. Should I forgive them? Did they not know what they what they were doing? Did they not truly? And I'm not I'm not saying let's let let's let us proceed with hate and, and let's let's act violently over this. But it's it's just asking those questions and dealing with that with that information and that understanding that these people knew exactly what they were doing. I find it very difficult. I was having, like I said, I was having this conversation with a friend and uh, he did say things like, no man, they didn't know what they were doing historically. And in my mind, I'm like, I, I find that very difficult to believe because self-proclaimed, they'll tell you themselves that they had the greatest generals and they did end up winning the wars because they, they did have, have greater, um, greater weaponry, greater, perhaps military minds even. And even if they didn't have greater military minds, at the end of the day, to think that when, when you're coming to colonize a place and you're coming to take over its place, its resources, its people, and enslave them, essentially, 
not even essentially, literally enslave them. You're co- and you're coming to enslave them that it wouldn't be a, a stroke of brilliance to think to yourself, oh, we should take their identity. If they, if they don't know who they are and all they know is that they serve us, then for generations and generations, that's all they'll do. And which, which actually feeds very well into my next point. And now my people are slaves and the mental shackles run so deep that they'll fight me, their own leader, before they fight their masters. And I was, I was, I was in tears at that point. At that point, I was crying when I wrote that. The, the mental slavery, it still exists today. In, in what I have just said, I, I'm literally expressing the, the manifestation of what they hoped to achieve and what they hoped to accomplish by taking away our identity in the beginning. Is they hope that the mental shackles will be generational. Because you, you won't know you're lost if you don't know who you are. And they'll fight me, their leader. Very easily, uh, it can happen that I come into a situation where I'm talking to someone and perhaps these points are raised. Now, I don't go around saying these things. <laughs> despite despite the fact that you're seeing this on, on, a, on a platform that I'm, I'm trying to build. Uh, I, this, these are not things that I, I go around raising as conversational points. I understand that mm, I don't even want to make a matrix reference right now, but it, it's kind of understanding that some people are just not ready to be unplugged. And if you tell them that it's all a simulation, if you tell them that it's all, then it's just not going to register with them and they'll they'll turn into Agent Smith. They'll turn into the very thing you're trying to 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 protect them from, to take them away from, to save them from, they will become a force that is fighting for, do you understand? And they'll fight me. Next point extends on that, even further than fighting me, because who am I, right? Who am I to them? And very beautifully, our last point. They'll renounce their own ancestors, heritage, history, before they renounce their master's Lord and Savior. And when you identify as believing in practicing African spirituality, then you're mad. No, you've 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 lost a screw, buddy. What are you talk what are you talking about, man? Slaughtering. Ugh, barbaric. Right? And when you identify as Christian and you don't practice those things, do you know what? You're, you're intelligent. You're logical. It, it, it makes sense that you think that because, I mean, it's, it's written. <laughs> it pains me. It really, really pains me. And... We've, we've, we've sort of finished the notes over there. We're, we're going to go off the cuff and sort of finish this out and, and sort of capture what the, what the feeling was and why it, it put me in pain understanding this. Because as I was talking to a brother of mine, um, and my brother is still Christian, was Christian, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I'm kind of swaying him a little bit, <laughs> but I'm not even like like I've said in the past. I'm not against Christianity. I'm I'm not the enemy of Christianity. I'm not the antichrist. <laughs> okay, I'm the anti-Christianity, but I'm not the antichrist, right? Um, yeah, I'm not even against Christianity. Listen, believe what you want to believe, practice what you want to practice. But at the end of the day, I I would just like there to be a a very deep understanding of what the truth is in context. 
it would just make me happy to to know that you understand that the actions and words of a great man listen christ suffered if if we are going to go off the premise that all of all of what happened in that book is real and he believed what he believed etc that man suffered and he had a way of thinking and a way of life that even i aspire so I aspire to live like that. I aspire to have that deeper connection with myself, to have that deeper connection with, with God, that I, I can renounce all worldly things, that even in crucifixion, Okay, do you know what else it is? It's Bakolele, Bawa, Abayaza, Bayanzayo. What if they knew, <laughs> you know? And this is, like I said, this is just me riffing. This is just me having this conversation with you. And it's, it's, it's me unpacking the thoughts in my mind as I'm speaking to you. What if they knew? What if they knew exactly what they were doing? Is, is it still, do we still, is it still as easy to forgive them? I'm not saying do we still forgive them. I mean, of course we do. Because right now we're generations later um not too many since the end of the physical tyranny but the, the the mental tyranny still exists some of the most devout christians i know are family members of mine um some of the most devout christians are black people and i'm not saying there's anything wrong with this like i said the 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 prophet himself his teachings beautiful and i find that we agree on a lot of things when 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 referencing things that were directly his lessons and and things that he taught and and he he was agree on a lot of that and i aspire to to be something to be christ-like but with that being said there's also an understanding that those teachings those words those books were twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools and we were the fools that, that the traps were for. Because the first generation understood exactly what was going on. And the second generation probably understood as well. But over time, and then this is what they understood, is over time, even if the people look at the same, they still practice the things that they practice, when they lose the context and the understanding of why they do certain things, why they believe certain things, when you, without a why, if you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. And so they, they, they took what we stood for or they, they took what, what we were doing stood for. And so it fell in the minds of our people. And I don't know, man. In terms of a way forward, I, I don't know. All I can do is just talk about it, uh, speak about my findings. I'm, I'm not going to force the, the idea on anyone. Because truth is never heard, rarely ever seen. And even when it is seen and heard, it's barely understood. So I'm sure that even what I understand is, is, is a fraction of the truth or some, some, some version of it. But it is true. And the, the parts that I have seen are quite hectic. And I suppose the way forward would be to, to understand that what happened happened, accept that it happened and form your own opinion of it. I said this yesterday, I'll say it again. I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'm here to tell you, I'm not even here to tell you how I think. I'm just here to say, how to think. The way I think is one thing and it's based on my experiences, but how to think as a general, 
practice is something good. I believe that the the beginning of wisdom is is to empty the basket of your mind. And I know this is going against a, a lot a lot of the a lot of the, the texts, a lot of the, the religious texts already, because it is he says the, the, the beginning of our wisdom is to fear God. I think the beginning of wisdom is to forget everything you think you know. In so doing, in emptying the basket that contains everything you think you know, then I believe as a student you will be ready. And the saying goes, when the student is ready, the master will appear. And I believe that is that is when you'll meet God. And from there you can form your own conclusions. Don't wanna don't wanna go too too much over the runtime today. Um, thank you for listening. Love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Sage, signing out.